This mod review is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Please like, subscribe, and comment. So today I've got a treat for you. I've got a pair of American semi trucks and three different American style semi trailers for you today. So let's go ahead and jump on into this. So first off, I've got a Kenworth W900A from 7L Farming, and I've got a link to his Facebook page in the description below. Let's go ahead and take a look here at this truck. Go to trucks, and we scroll on over. Oops, there we can see the one that I didn't want to show off quite yet. So we've got the Kenworth 1974 W900A, now, I'm not too sure about the price at $24,500, but let's take a look at this pretty truck here. So we've got the choice of main color. Change that to whatever we want. Blue. And then we've got the choice of design color, which changes the front fenders. Blue and white orange yellow I've always been told that I picked the most horrid color combinations just go with it. we'll just go <laughs> with that for now uh, we can also change the design which actually just changes the rear fenders here from minimizer to half so those are our only options there minimizer are half and it has 300 or 650 horsepower and costs thirty dollars a day let's go ahead and buy this and while we're at it let's buy um let's look at this so it's a two axle variant so let's buy the warrior just as a frame of reference and we're going to get him in star orange also. This particular tr truck is 460 horsepower. So here we've got the in-game Warrior. And then we've got the Kenworth W900. Now, one thing that I'm not sure on is, is the scale of the W900 to the in-game semi. You can see that it is... A wee bit smaller physically than the uh, than the in-game semi. You can see they're both about the same here as far as where the tail is, but the Kenworth is shorter in length and shorter in height. So I don't know if that is is um, is indicative of of the W900 in general. I don't think so. I've seen plenty of these running down the road, and they don't look smaller than any other semi. Um, so I would like to have maybe seen this scaled a bit better uh, in comparison to the in-game trucks, because pairing the two together side by side, uh, this one does look a little bit smaller. Let's go ahead and take a look at the inside. I've got a pretty clean interior in here. So often we get uh, trucks in Farm Sim that don't have that nice looking of interiors. This one is pretty nice looking indeed. Let's go ahead and start her up. And we get a nice interior fan spinning. Do have interior lights. Are a bit on the bright side. I'm not sure what this is going to look like at night. It might be a little bit of a glare for you. Do not have turn signal indicators. Uh, on the inside, let's go ahead and look on the outside here. Turn on our lights. Turn those off. First stage. Second stage. Got our driving lights, our parking lights. Got our low beams, high beams, and then off. Go ahead and check the horn out. You have animated clappers on the uh, on the exhaust. There we go. We have working brake lights, but no working backup lights. 
just park this one over here for now. The outside. It is a very nice truck. It's just scaled a little off, in my opinion. All right, now let's take a look at the other truck I wanted to show you today. We've got the Peterbilt 389 Sleeper Cab, $105,100. It is 435 horsepower, and take a look at this. This rivals the Roadrunner uh, that is in-game, and we're going to compare those two here in just a bit. So we've got our choice of main color. Let's go with orange again because, well, that's just how we roll. Got our choice of reds. A little deeper color red this time around. And we have a ton of options on this. Now, the Peterbilt and the trailers I'm going to show you here in a moment are all from another Facebook page, uh, Blue Line Modding. I will have a link to their Facebook page also in the description. And just like 7L Farms Facebook, you can get to this without needing an account. So anyone can get to this page and get a hold of mods. Now, we've got stock fender, stock bumper. We've got stock fender pull bar. We've got half fender, stock bumper. So we've obviously seen the bumper change and the rear fender here is changing. We have half fender and a bull bar. So we can see that change up there. We have minimizer stock bumper. Okay, you can see the rims again. We have minimizer bull bar. We have chrome hump stock bumper. We have chrome hump with the bull bar. And we're back to stock fender stock bull bar. So let's just go with let's just go with this option just so that we have a little bit of variant. Now we've got the Miter Cut DC Fender. Okay, so that is going to be dealing with our exhaust here. We have the 45 turnout. We have the 90. See, it's turned straight backwards. 90 turnout, which is now turned out to the sides. We have the miter cut DC fender top. So now we actually have a design color here on the top and on the fenders. Then 45, 90, and basically now we have the whole iteration all over again. Let's go back to, uh, let's go with that option. How about that? Now we've got Peterbilt, no cover for the wheel setup. Let's go back to this. We've got this. Let's try to zoom in here on wheels. Let's take we'll just take a look at these rear wheels and the front wheels. Okay, so we got the Peterbilt no cover. Peterbilt half cover that puts a uh, you know kind of a little cover there over the uh, the hubs. Peterbilt full cover. Alcoa no cover, so we got different hubs there. Alcoa half cover, full cover, HQ Peterbilt no cover, HQ Peterbilt half cover, and full cover, and HQ Altoa, Alcoa no cover, half and full, and HQ Heavy Alcoa, heavy half and heavy full, and then we're back to Peterbilt no cover. Now we have just as many options here in engine setup. So we have a large assortment of engines here. So I'm going to pick one of, not one of each option, but I am going to pick a few just to see if we have different engines. So we have the ISX CM871. And let's just go ahead and release that one. We have the got for some reason we got three different engines and the name on them isn't changing but the horsepower is 
We have the ISX CM971, the 871. We have the C156NZ. Let's go ahead and lease that one. And we have the C15 Koth. That one too. All right, so there we go. Now let's take a look here at the uh, the scaling compared to the, the Warrior truck. You can see the scaling is a bit closer with the Warrior truck, but let's get the end game Roadrunner. And compare it against the in-game Roadrunner. And you can see the in-game Roadrunner is a bit bigger. It's taller. And uh, it's about the same lengthwise. But it is a bit taller. Now, of course, it does have the Studio Sleeper. I guess that's what you call it. Now, it is significantly bigger in the nose. I mean, look at that. That is huge compared to these. So... Now, do we say that the in-game trucks are a scale too big? That just seems like an odd argument to make since they are in-game trucks. You would think everything would be scaled proportionately. Or this truck is also maybe a wee bit on the small size. Let's take a listen to these engines. Get kind of a whine to it. Oh, that's the wrong one. That one kind of sounded the same. As did that one. Kind of hope that if we had those different engine options, we would have different options for sounds. Now let's take a little closer look at the wheels. So this one has the Alcoa full cover. You can see the Alcoa on there. The Alcoa stamp there. Then this one was, I think, the Peterbilt with uh, no cover. Uh, the lower rims. And you've already seen a little bit of hit. The interior is immaculate. Look at this beautiful interior. Again, we have not seen interiors like this in a farm sim vehicle. Go ahead and check out the lights. You have dash does light up. Wheel does spin. And we got our parking lights. Now I'm not a I'm not a fan at all of the headlights. So watch this. Okay, did you see that? The little dot. Those are the headlights. I'm not a fan of how these headlights are. These are not, they're not doing, uh, they're not, I don't think these are properly set up as Farm Sim 19 headlights. I mean, they do work. You got rear lights, but, uh, rear lights aren't so bad. The front lights, I really don't like those. I hope he uh, figures out how to do uh, 19 lights better. We have reverse lights and we have four ways left and right blinkers. All right, now let's take a look at some trailers. Let's get these trucks out of the way.
that interior and the Peterbilt challenges the uh, the Roadrunner's interior which is the better of all the in-game trucks interiors this one just looks like are you kidding me like could we have gotten an upgrade from like the uh, the Geo interior here all right now I've got for you an American style tanker an American style flatbed and a modified version of the Wilson animal trailer. Let's take a look. All three of these trailers can be found over again at Blue Line Modding. Let's go to trailers and animals first off. So let's look at the trim car 6500 food grade um, milk and water trailer. This thing is nice and long, has two rear axles what we are used to seeing here in the US and we have a choice of color on our on our frame yeah, the drop legs and on the axles back let's change that to black let's go ahead and buy that up this trailer has a capacity of 24,605 liters and is $76,500 out of the gate with the color change and let's compare that to the in-game MKS 3200. Uh, this is a smaller trailer. It's fatter in diameter and has those three axles, which just looks a little bit weird uh, when you're not used to seeing those on the roads. I have a choice in color. It's basically just changing the tank. Now this one does have a 32,000 liter capacity, uh, but is $72,000. So you can see how much longer the uh, trim car is. It also extends out the back and the front. Got the two axles in the back. Nice looking rims, nice looking tires. Warning tape. And just pretty. Of course, this holds water and milk. Go ahead and match these two up. And just pull them out of the way here. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the Blue Line version of the Wilson trailer. Go to Animal Transport. So we have the in-game Wilson Silver Star right here. And you can see it has a capacity of just 12 cows, 36 pigs, and 38 sheep. Then we have the Blue Line variant of this. Of the Wilson Silver Star. It says blue line on the top as opposed to Wilson. And we have a choice of steel rims or aluminum. Okay. And this one has a capacity of 36 cows, 84 pigs, and 76 sheep. Let's go ahead and buy a pair of these just to compare them. I got the blue line with steel rims and the Wilson is just stock, has no choices to it. Blue line. Here is the pretty standard steel rims. You're not going to spend a whole ton of money on your animal trailer, probably to have pretty rims on it. Here at the back are a few subtle changes also to the back. We've got uh, rubber bumpers here on the back, uh, whereas the in-game trailer has these round backup lights. 
the uh, blue line version does not have those. All right, something else I want to show you is let's hook up to each of these because the Wilson doesn't seem, the in-game trailer doesn't seem to have proper working running lights. Go ahead and hook up here. Turn on our running lights. Okay, so we can see right here on the corner, right above Silver Star, that one lights up. But these other lights are not lighting up along the side. Okay. We have rear running lights. But the lights on the side don't appear to be lighting up. Other than these two lights on the corner here under Silver Star. Okay. Now let's go over here to the blue line, which again is from Blue Line Monty. Move it over here out of the way. And let's turn on the running lights and you'll see immediately we've got running lights on on the side, all along the side here. The row of lights on the sides on the back also are lighting up. They were not lighting up on the in-game version. And we have what I would argue is a bit more maybe realistic uh, level of uh, capacity on this thing. All right. Now, let's look at our last... American trailer and it is here under bailing technologies. We've got the Transcraft Eagle flatbed trailer. It's metal deck. Spread axles on the back. We can change the color again of our frame on the bottom as well as the axles and the uh, the legs here, the supports. Gray or dark brown. When we have other options, we can go no toolbox, or we can put a toolbox on the back, and we can go with steel wheels or aluminum. That is pretty much our choice. And this one is a thirty-seven thousand and five hundred dollars, and is one hundred fifty dollars per day. We don't really have any other semi flatbed trailer. There really isn't anything else to compare this to. As you can see, we do have straps on here. The straps do go all the way across, but for some reason, uh, when you turn them on, kind of warp through the uh, through the deck. Not quite, I guess, positioned properly, uh, but they do work just fine. Go ahead and hook this one up. And then I'll jump up to a, uh, a flatbed that I've already got hooked up with a bunch of pallets and bales. Just to show you that the, the straps do work. Go. Now let's go ahead and turn on our running lights. You can see we got nice running lights along the sides. And the backs. Four ways work. Left and right blinker. Brake lights work. And there we go. So, let me just jump up here to setup that I had for our thumbnail. And here you can see the flatbed trailer. Uh, we've got some square bales on there. Got some round bales I hooked up to it. And we've got a whole fleet of herbicide. We've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Uh, fourteen pallets of herbicide. And we could probably have put another four on there. Maybe maybe six if we squeezed them on there good and tight. So we can get a whole boatload of stuff on here. And you can see the straps do work just fine and dandy once we have stuff loaded on them. So guys, I hope you like this 
bevy of American trucks and trailers. Uh, they can be found, again, over at Blue Line Modding and 7L Farms Incorporated. Both are Facebook pages. And both Facebook pages are uh, available to anyone uh, that wishes to sign up. You do not have to be a member on Facebook in order to uh, in order to get access to these mods. Now, these two trucks, they look scaled appropriately together, but when comparing them with uh, the in-game trucks, they do look a little bit off. So let me know in the comments what you think of these trucks and these trailers. And once again, until next time, scratch that ending. We're not quite done. I've got one more trailer to show you. So while I was busy recording the other, the earlier segment uh, to this video, uh, they went and released a, another trailer on me. Uh, here we have the Arctic Log trailer, and this thing is a beast. I've got the Flegal in-game log trailer here behind it. We know that this particular log trailer is 12 meters in length. Yeah. Bale, not the bale, but the log. Log guards there, and we know that this trailer is 12 meters uh, because I can uh, I can put 12 meter logs on here without too much hassle and without it hanging off too terrible far. There we are, at basically 11 and a half meters from the log rack to the uh, to the end of the trailer. And take a look at this Arctic trailer. One, the log spikes are much taller, so we're going to be able to stack a lot more logs on this trailer. And this thing is a beast. Start here at the end. And work our way up. Right there is the uh, the end of the Flegel. 11 and a half meters. But look, we've got we've got more trailer to go. We can go all the way out here to about oh, 16 meters in length. And the other cool thing about this trailer is take a look at where the straps are located. They're located right here on these ratchet um points so when you actually strap these down you're going to see the straps here on the ratchets the ratchet mounts which is pretty darn cool now the way you could possibly do this is you know cut some cut some 10 meter logs which would probably get you to about here and then you could cut some 6 meter logs to get you up here in this upper little section let's take a look at this thing in the shop so if we go to tools and then forestry. So let's take a look first at the in-game timber runner for $28,000. Its only options are standard or wide wheels. Now let's take a look at the Arctic logging trailer is $18,000. And we have some options here. We've got a chrome plate down the middle here. I don't think that looks too good. I think a log trailer should be just bare bones, steel, nothing fancy. And we got steel wheels, or we could go with chrome wheels. Then again, out here in the middle of the woods, in the forested area, you're going to want to go with steel wheels. I don't see you're going to have fancy, fancy wheels on uh, on a trailer like that. Design color is the uh, the verticals. Okay the log forks if you will and then the main color is of course the main chassis whatever color you want and it is only eighteen thousand dollars base price now the coloring is fairly expensive at four thousand dollars a piece so it still brings you up to twenty six thousand two hundred fifty dollars a fair price, if you ask me, for a 16 meter long log trailer. Now, this trailer is not auto load. So recently I did a mod review on an auto load Flegel version of the uh, Flegel trailer. So if you're into auto loading logs, well then the Arctic trailer is not for you. But if you don't have a problem loading logs manually, then maybe this trailer is something you want to look at. back on up here look up and let's go ahead and hit the straps you'll see those straps basically correspond with all of the ratchet mount points 
on the uh, the log brackets. I'm sure there is a formal name to those that is escaping me because I am not a uh, logger by trade. Look at that trailer. That thing is long and I mean you could put 16 meter logs on here if you wanted. If you had a way of cutting them that would be pretty awesome. I did see a mod or a scorpion king that cut um, oh it cut uh, 30 meter logs which seemed a bit ridiculous but uh, I guess maybe that mod would have the capability of cutting 16 meter logs so guys we are really going to close the video out this time so I hope you liked the video if you did please go ahead and click that like button and until next time happy farming